And even if you don't grow a garden with a bunch of cabbage and kale, an arugula like this with its really aromatic, pinnately compound leaves, um, you probably are still familiar with the mustard family, but unfortunately it's probably a weed. They really common weeds growing in yards and fields everywhere. So mustard family is a good one to be familiar with and an easy one to access, but they grow in the wild as well. Uh, they're part of the shrub step ecosystem and produce some beautiful flowers. Um, and they grow all the way up into alpine environments. We often call them cruciferous vegetables, uh, and that comes from the family name, the old one, cruciferae, which comes from these flowers. They have four cross-shaped petals, so cruciferous is where it gets its name. Now we call it brassicaceae, or just the mustard family. Let's meet some of these members of the mustard family around Washington State. There are plenty of pretty examples from Washington State. Most of them have white, purple, or yellow flowers. And if they have that and four petals, you're pretty sure it's in the mustard family. They sit right here in the eudicot branch of the plant family tree, uh, along with roses and cucumbers and even oak trees, if you could believe it. What to look for to know if you have something in the mustard family. So first, these herbaceous characteristics, like a basil rosette of leaves, usually with these very lobed margins. Um, so that's how they're arranged there. Uh, and then flowers are really the, the main giveaway. They have four petals. And there's only a few other families with four petals. But oddly enough, six stamens. And that really gives it away. If you think you have something in the mustard family and you want to identify it to a species, here's what you need to pay attention to. So the leaf characteristics lots of details here so size and shape of leaves and be specific the basal rosette those leaves usually look different than the leaves up here on the flowering stock so hopefully you have something in flower uh, you need to note if there are leaves on that flowering stock they're usually different and so what do they look like of course details about the flower and then in particular the fruit um, the size and arrangement of the fruits is pretty important. Um, and going back here for a minute to hairs, they can be little simple hairs on the leaves. A lot of times they're branched, and sometimes they're multiply branched or even sort of star-shaped. So you probably need a magnifying glass to see some of those details. I'm going to start us off with shepherd's purse. Kind of an interesting plant in just the terms of its fruits kind of unusual. Most mustard family plants produce siliques, which are long and narrow, but these produce silicils, and quite a few others do as well. These in particular are kind of heart-shaped, which apparently reminds some of a shepherd's purse. Whatever that means, I don't know either. But shepherd's purse is an easy one to recognize just by virtue of that unique fruit. Uh, this is a plant that comes from Europe, and got transplanted into North America and grows as a weed just about everywhere, so you're probably familiar with it. If you can catch it at, at this stage and get it out of the garden, you'll prevent a lot of the seeds from here making it uh, into the next year and maybe save yourself some weeding. For, so maybe a practical plant to know there. Everything else about it is very mustardy. It's got four white petals and a basil rosette of leaves that start in the fall and then really take off in the spring and the flowers come out early in the spring and continue as far into summer as they can. So there's shepherd's purse. The mustard family is very diverse. The flora of the Pacific Northwest list 54 genera, not just species, but genera. And Arabis and Draba, the next one, are a couple of those. Pretty little plants uh, grow in a variety of habitats with these pretty four bright white petals on each of the flowers. This one is a cascade rock crest, and you can see why it gets its name growing there in the rocks, as many mustards do. Now that one was perennial, but Draba verna, um, one of the many Draba uh, species that we have, is an annual. This is another uh, import from Europe, and so it grows pretty weedy, like most of them do, and like many mustards do. This one, you've probably overlooked a hundred times, uh, grows in 
all kinds of disturbed habitat. This one goes beyond being annual, it's ephemeral, so it's very short-lived. Although it actually germinates in the fall and then overwinters, growing very slowly. And as soon as it can in the spring, sends all of its energy up from the leaves into these flowering stalks, which produce these short little seed pods, the siliques, less than a centimeter long seed, set seed, drops it, and is done. And all that probably by April uh, at the latest. You can see the whole plant here on the right. Here are the leaves down here at the base with the little hairs on them. They send up these flowering stalks that look like they have eight petals, but each of the four petals is actually divided into two lobes. Uh, and that's it. So very short-lived plant. Uh, spends most of its time as a seed underground in the summer um, or just as a tiny, tiny plantlet under the snow in the winter. So there you go, spring whitlow grass. Bit of an odd one. Some other beauties from the shrub step, things like dagger pod with this really showy purple flowers, kind of lavender and its fuzzy green leaves. Another plant that really seems to do well among the rocks. Like I said, these are pretty showy plants. These flowers get up to about a half inch across, so they're pretty healthy size. And the fruits, the siliques, will get a couple inches long and slightly curved. The other interesting thing that makes their leaves grayish like this is very branched hairs. So if you get a chance to pick one up and look at it under hand lens, uh, you'll find it really kind of this beautiful little microscopic gem. Last thing, we have wallflowers. These always catch my eye, whether it's in the mountains or in the plant nursery. Just standing up on this tall wand of a stem uh, with these buttery yellow flowers, or sometimes even ranging into orange. Uh, you can see their very distinctly cruciferous or cross-shaped flowers here, where the family gets its name. Uh, and you'll find these growing in pretty inhospitable habitats for such a pretty flower. Uh, and these are pretty... Sh large and showy as well, um, usually over a half inch wide here at the top. Uh, this one over on the right is growing in the sand dunes over in the juniper dunes. Um, this one on the left is just growing among a bunch of rocks where we have these pine trees as well, but you just find them in, in these spots where you, you think a plant wouldn't grow a lot of times, and yet there they are, really catches the eye. So there's the mustard family. Um, a humble but really quite beautiful family in the Pacific Northwest. I hope you will enjoy them out there this spring. Until next time, happy botanizing.